One of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did for our viewers on YouTube is create a free mentorship course that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they get started. But please take note that there is limited seating every single week. So please reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. The link is in the description. I think my... All right. This is um, weekend mentoring. Uh as far as you know august 14th this one will be a good one you know we got a full house here uh everyone is is you know ready to go so i just thought that i would just i mean if you haven't heard about this already which i mean it's pretty hard that you didn't uh we do have the boot camp coming up on august 17th um it's gonna be bow gonna be alex gonna be a ton of people um, who are presenting James, all the mods. So it's going to be super fun. August 17th. Um, you know, I'm definitely pumped for it. I know a lot of you guys are as well. Um, so just thought that I would say this as a reminder and, uh, yeah, let's get into this one. So, uh, this is what was kind of submitted from a, a member. This is just the full chart for context. And as far as OLTK, I mean, it wasn't really that popular of a name. I mean, we got a bit of some movement in the morning, but I mean, that was really it. Um, and so this was from Xander and this is kind of his trade. And I guess what, how we'll do it today is because there's so many people, um, we'll just start out with me and then we'll go to Clow, then Tom, then James, then Austin, Steve. And then if Oliver wants to say anything, Oliver can, just because there's so many people and I just want to get through like as much as we can. So as far as I go, um, you know, I think this chart is okay, but I just really want to talk about, um, you know, just kind of the entry and the re-entry because you notice that this chart did kind of end up fading. You know, there were other stocks in play there were kind of other things going on with the ticker. And so, I mean, this, this is okay, but you have to be saying in this scenario, like, okay, what's the range in this? What's the range here, right? We have two nine. And I feel like we talk about this every single weekend mentoring, but we have two nine and we have uh, 3.2. And this is kind of a trade that's near the bottom of the range. And you have to be saying like, okay, like, like, also, where is my support here as well? So we have support here at 2.9. You don't really want to be shorting into support and into that weakness, right? You always want to be looking to kind of either kind of scale higher with the set risk, but you don't really want to be shorting into weakness, in my opinion. So for me, um, I'm just saying like the short into three is okay, but you have to be saying like, okay, I'm willing to go 3.1, 3.2 just because of the range, right? And that's kind of how I feel. So where you kind of added at 2.9 is a place that you could have been covering. Then you could have reshorted VWAP, you know, 3.1, 3.2, looked for that kind of move higher and looked for that kind of fade lower. Um, so that's kind of, uh, you know, that's kind of my uh, perspective on this ticker, if anyone else wants to add in. I think Clow is his turn's next and then Tom. No, I don't like the range on this. That's the only thing. Um, yeah. I 100% I, I, I agree with what you said. Tommy? Yeah, for me, it's just like <clears throat> that kennel as a stuff. Yes, you could, I don't know, like chase a three and maybe cover right after when it gets to that support. But it's, it's, it's really not much range here. Yeah. Uh, you know, you could go for, you know, quickie here, you know, like scout maybe after the big death kennel or stuff through uh -huh. view app. But probably that's it. Yeah. And <clears throat> I think that person, he added more or is that? Yeah, after yeah he added nine. it to nine. Yeah, so, you know, if you add it and thinking it's going to, it's going to wash to that 2.8, 2.7, right? You should set it for break even, okay? I mean, that's just how I do it. If I want to add more size and anticipate that breakdown, then I'm, I'm going to have a uh, stop, you know, just at you know, break even, that's all. Yeah, so, I mean, I've been here before. Okay. This, is, this is a tough one. Like, we've got higher lows around VWAP and then we've got volume crossing VWAP. And the only people I yeah. see in trouble after the first couple of shorts are really uh, shorts. So yeah. like, it's, it's a dangerous short to me. Yeah. Uh, but like I said, I've been there. I mean, everyone's been there. I think it's a tough one. Emotions yeah. get to get out, but really you got to just look at objectively, like who's stuck here. Yeah. Once you cross VWAP, shorts are really in trouble and not many longs are in trouble. Yeah. yeah. I agree. I agree. All right. Uh, and my mic's in trouble. 
Yeah, I agree. All right. Um, next on this um, is open. Um, this is just a kind of first bounce trade. I mean, there's not really much to say on this one other than just kind of nice work. Um, you know, um, I think this is good into the pullback. It's not necessarily a trade that I would love to take. And I think the reason being is that when we get a big, big, big kind of pullback on a, on a stock like this, I'm always a little bit kind of hesitant um, in, in situations like that. And, and I guess the reason being is just in this market, we've been seeing a lot, you know, after we get a pullback like this, the stock doesn't recover or it does recover or whatever. You know, so I guess in a situation like this, especially with a slow kind of grinder stock like this, I mean, to me, it's a little bit risky. I wouldn't necessarily love it, but um, it ended up kind of working out and it, it still was front side technically, but I mean, and you were kind of following that trend and everything, but, you know, definitely a risky one in my opinion. Anyone else? No one else longs but Austin. No, it's yep. great. Uh, so, so I think, and I think Austin chose a lot about it and talk about it in his trade. It's like one entry, one exit. No, it's like I would have taken a profit below 18, like in 1792, and then scale up to 1812, 1822, and that's it because mm -hmm. of the, that, that high previous day of 1825, high previous of 1820, 1825. I, that's it. That's the only thing. Yeah. Uh, one, yeah, one thing I want to say, it's a great entry. Um, the, the, the one thing that I, I, I liked was that there was a lot of patience on this entry because there's a lot of traders that would go try and have FOMO and, and, and take like an 18 entry or like a 1790 yeah. entry on the way down or something like that. Yeah. Thinking, oh, it's like the first dip in a long time. And yeah. this, is an this is an example of what I talk about how when socks, you know, have a really tight uh, you know, yeah. steep uptrend, eventually that steepness will break. And then it's your job to get, to be patient, kind of take a step back and be like, it's probably going to, you know, be a larger time frame kind of entry. And that's what this one is. Yeah. It's, it's patient all the way yeah. until yeah. 1750 ish yeah. area. Yep. No, I, so I, I, like that. I definitely agree. I, the only thing is, is that this first kind of dip, it like, it's really kind of a, 50, I mean, we are so above view up. We are kind of so deviated and it does work, but this first kind of dip can be something that does get stuffed on pretty hard. You know, it can be like, it can be a situation where, you know, we, we pop a little bit and then we just get slammed again. And then we're at 1750. So use hard stops on an entry like this, because that first dip for longs where every long is like, man, this is it, this is it, this is it. And they start kind of averaging down. You know, you need to kind of, I mean, the patience for the entry was great. The plan worked out. It was really good. But just be careful on those those first kind of dip trades, you know. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.